Hello, 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 and thank you for tuning on to another episode of our scriptural breakdown ministry. My name is David Abraham, and our scripture for today comes from Romans 5, verses 9 to 12. And it reads, Much more then, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from his wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation, death in Adam, life in Christ. Therefore, just as one man, sin entered the world and death through sin. And thus, death spread to all men because all sinned. I repeat, much more then, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from his wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now re received the reconciliation, death in Adam, life in Christ. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, thus death spread to all men because all sinned. Now, I want to divide the scripture into four parts. And the first part is, much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Now, the key words here are much more justification by the blood and saved from the wrath through him. Now, what is much more? Much more is in addition, the better part of this whole scene. Now the whole scene, the synopsis of the whole scene from 1 to 8, Romans 5, 1 to 8 says, speaks about the demonstration of the love of God by sending his son. Just like Romans 5 verse 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now in the previous episode, I was able to relate this via revelation that it is like um, John 3.16 that says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So he says here, The much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from, the, from wrath through him. And having now been justified by his blood so the justification of mankind came via the blood that was shed on calvary the blood of christ that was shed on calvary so then he says we shall be saved from wrath through him so when the justification of christ came it automatically brought about our justification through grace it brought about our peace it brought about our good health and all other packages it brought about our not being able to be condemned and other packages that came as a result of the death of Christ. They said, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. So we're justified through him, through Christ, and we are saved from the wrath of God through him. Now that wrath of God is the wrath of the law, the wrath of breaking the law, the wrath of breaking the law that has brought about many many consequences the wrath of breaking the law that brought about um, a, a, a condemnation of sin now here christ we shall be saved through the wrath of him then the second bit says for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to god through the death of his son so we were enemies of god because of our sinful nature now, how do people become, become enemies? It's either you love God or you are an enemy of God. The love of God is through fellowship with Him, 
confessing him as your personal Lord and Savior, fellowshipping with him, camaraderie with him, communicating with him, and taking instructions, and most of all, obedience to the Word of God. Now, that is how we are friends with God. But anybody that does not do that, anybody that does not go about um, showing love of God, is in is an enemy of God. And so, that is not in love with God. He's an enemy with God. See, and, and it says, if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through death of his son. So when we're enemies, we're reconciled to God through the death of his son. Then he said, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So when God died, that brought about, sorry, when Christ died, that brought about the reconciliation of God. When Christ died, it brought about the reconciliation of ourselves to God. Then he said, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life so this bringing of life so bringing of life um, brought about the bringing of life is through the death of Christ so he says I repeat says much more than having now been justified by his blood we shall be saved from the wrath through him for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of him his son much more having been reconciled we shall be saved by his life so because we were reconciled to God by the death of his son that is automatic that because Christ rose now we are, we we um, begin we we in turn since Christ had life more abundantly we in turn are able to have life more abundantly then the last bit says that the, the third the third bit says and not only that but we also rejoice in god through our lord jesus christ so there is a rejoicing in god and there is an exaltation of god through our lord jesus christ through whom we have now re received the reconciliation so the reconciliation was received after the death of christ the reconciliation was received after Christ resurrected and we continue to live our lives in that ministry of reconciliation, then, then, then we, are, we are conscious of the fact that we have been reconciled to God and God loves us and therefore God will continue to show his mercy, will continue to show his loving kindness, his compassion, will continue to show us peace, will continue to show us goodness, will continue to show us the thoughts which he has for us, which are good, which is to give us a future as an expected end according to the says, death in Adam, life in Christ. Death in Adam, life in Christ. So the era of Adam died and there was life in Christ. That's the resurrection of life brought about life in Christ. That giving to us life through our mortal bodies then verse 12 says therefore just as th through one man sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all sinned i repeat therefore just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin now who do we speak about here we speak about adam through one man that is the man called adam sin entered the world because when they disobeyed god that was a sin they ate of the forbidden fruit that was a sin when god was when the when the spirit of god was hovering over the garden of eden and he said who told you have you eaten from the why are you hiding because they had fallen from a state of righteousness because they sinned and they started to hide so he said why are you hiding it's only the guilty that are afraid and he said have you eaten of the fruit that i told you not to eat then he said the woman that you gave me gave it to me and i did eat and that was the fall from grace the fall from glory at that time then he says here he says therefore just as one man sin entered the world through sin entered the world that's adam he says at death 
through sin and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all sinned so adam was the, the father of the sinful nature he brought about sin and as a result of that all his descendants began to exhibit that genealogy of sinfulness they exhibit that nature of sinfulness until christ came and died for our sins and we began we began to become justified in the sight of god now i want to pray that god is able to expand our minds on this word that god is able to give us more revelation or knowledge on this word that we will be able to walk with him and roll with him that ultimately god gives us the grace to continually follow our time god gives us the grace to continually walk with him god gives us the grace to continually um, have an understanding of the word the reconciliation message of christ the reconciliation of christ that we ultimately we continue to walk with it and run with it that ultimately we are able to fulfill our God-given destiny. All these are asked through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I thank you so much for listening. God bless. God bless. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.